I only got you to click because the thumbnail was kind of sexy, then I did my job by biting my necklace. Yummy. Iron. Huzzah! Anyways, today we have quite a conversation to have about one of the lead writers of V5 for Vampire the Masquerade and for his tirade that he just kind of spewed out onto Twitter a while ago and I never talked about it until the announced friggin' bat supplement and I was like, you know what, that's it, my blood's a boiling. I must talk about everything at once. So just so you know, Justin, stop assuming my my faction. Just, just stop it. That's it's not good. It's not good for you and it's not good for the players and I don't know why you're pushing one faction over the others. I have literally no idea. Working on things and here are some wording style choices that can help you realize your vampire chronicles. Consider the sex as ideologies consisting of members or adherents rather than sex being entities of themselves. So, for example, we generally change the Camarilla does a thing to think happens in many Camarilla domains or kindred of Camarilla courts often favor thing. It allows room for customizability by domain. Jesus Christ, I can't read. And it keeps the sex from being monolithic and governmental. Consider the difference between the Camarilla sent an Archon to punish the transgressors to the Archon came to the domain to punish the transgressors. The first is a declaration and supposes an off-screen authority. The latter gives you some questions to explore via story. Did someone send the Archon? Who? The Camarilla did! Where does the status come from anyway? Can I just declare myself Archon like I can with Prince or Baron? No, you cannot. Those, there are rules about that. What might the outcomes be? Why didn't the Archon come to other domain? Because he wasn't sent to the other domain. Duh, what kind of questions are these, Neonate? The idea of vampire government remains a popular thematic element and was a big characteristic of the world in the second through V20 editions. V2 through V20 assumed you were Camarilla. By all means, if you dig it, use it. By contrast, the first edition and V5 have the perspective that vampire society is more like criminal enterprise and that the Camarilla self-declared supremacy is in itself illegitimate. V5 assumes you are an anarch and you want to kick these false luminaries' claims into pieces. Okay, let's start the rant here. This is where the rant starts. Anarchs are not the good guys. Anarchs are just really not the good guys. They are just Camarilla, but younger. <laughs> like, that is all that they are. They go, hey, we are gonna have some sort of government by instead of having one prince that is already not like a king of a country, okay? They're like a prince of a town. Instead, we are gonna have a baron per town district pretty much, and they're gonna come together and make decisions together inside these meetings. The thing is, barons still kinda declare themselves, barons still kinda are like the sole ruler of their tiny district. Barons can still revoke other barons' claims out of spite, because vampire society, it is the same shit, except your daddy didn't let you call yourself prince, so you decided to call yourself baron and challenge the daddy, going, why should I wait until I'm 500 years old to be prince when I can be a baron at 50, bitch? You know, that sort of thing. They're not in any way better than Camarilla. They're just Camarilla 2.0. And it's like, yay, death to the tower, to the... Pyramid supremacy while well, we build our own pyramid over here. That's that's kind of what's happening with the Anarchs and they're always going, you know, like, oh, we're, we're the Anarchs, you know, this is the punk club down with the government. But they effectively made their own government that is precisely the exact same shit. It is the exact same shit. Um... And then you go, Paris must want to play as the Anarchs because they are disassembling the Camarilla and the Camarilla are like the bad guys and the Anarchs are like 
the good guys. And no, you are building a World of Darkness Vampire the Masquerade game. There are no good guys. Majority of decent people are fucking Otarkis, meaning they have no allegiances and they're kind of existing on the down low. And good people are kind of like, in quotation marks. Because unless, unless you go for that weird salubri breed where they're trying to get like the perfect balance between the beast and not the beast, vampires are just not very nice people. There, I, I dare said it. Vampires are just not very nice people, and they're not meant to be very nice people, okay? But you're just setting this up as Anarchs are the good guys and Camarilla are the bad guys. And I have to, I have to ask, did you like play previous editions and you were like, boy, Camarilla are not my favorite faction? If only my favorite faction was on the pedestal as the de facto faction to play as. Wouldn't this game be great? No. No, no, it wouldn't. So, here's a bright idea. Especially now that you're taking Sabat into consideration, and you made Sabat evil fuckers that are nothing but evil. They're just the antagonists, and you didn't even put away for players to play them, you just said, don't brew that shit in. Which makes me once again question, why the fuck am I paying you $45 if you're gonna tell me to homebrew that shit in? I can homebrew that shit without paying you money. Just just so you know, that's that's how homebrew works. It's not like this is the first book to represent Sabat, but that was a whole different video. I have to ask what it is with this guy and just like, selecting some sort of sides that we're like supposed to agree with inside this game. Can you not create conflict in any other way? How about writing from a neutral point of view? Amazing, right? Okay, so this is how this side is like good and this is how this side is shitheads and this is how this side is good and this is how this side is shitheads and this is how this side is good and this is how this side is shitheads and you know what? I can do it for all three! I could literally do it for all three. I could name how each side is good and how they're shitheads. Sabat are very controversial, kind of doomsday -y. They're not much for human morality and they're not much for all of them nice rules and pitying you and stuff like that. They embrace by putting people into dirt graves and by having a whole bunch of vampires that don't even know that they're vampires being born like that and they send them off to war. But you know what? The Sabat are also currently fighting the Gehenna War and you see, if they lose the Gehenna War and the Diluvians are coming for your ass and they're gonna eat you all, and that doesn't sound like a very nice thing, does it? No, no, it doesn't. Camarilla, on the other hand, they're scheming, they're conniving, they're very power hungry, and it is very much a pyramid. But at the same time, they tried to find a way to organize themselves in order to prevent masquerade breaches and in order to continue with the secrecy of vampires in order to provide security for all. Which includes having rules on who to embrace and who not to embrace, which includes putting some vampires to death, unfortunately. And which includes kind of being outdated because they're a pyramid from top to bottom, right? So the person on top normally is the oldest person around or they're being controlled by the oldest person around from the back and they will not necessarily be the most in touch with the current society or make the best decisions as far as the 21st century is concerned. As for Anarchs, well, they're trying to establish a government. They have decided that one prince isn't all that good. They're not the shit. They decided that they should have advisors that should also agree, which is kind of like what Primogen are, honestly. 
So they were like, all of the Anarch territories are going to be divided and we are not going to enforce that many laws onto Kindred. Kindred can embrace whoever they please. They can have lovers. They can bring others into the fold if they please. But we're also going to deal with the masquerade breaches and we're going to put down the masquerade breaches because we're still fine with that whole secrecy thing. But at the same time, they're just about as scheming and conniving as the Camarilla is. <laughs> they will backstab each other as immortal monsters do, and they are creating mini pyramids of Camarilla design all over again. So it's just Camarilla but the kindergarten. There you go. There's the pros and cons <laughs> of all three factions. But instead of taking a look at it like that, you were like... You want to be part of the Anarchs, right? And I am going to write from the Anarchs' point of view and the other two factions are evil. And it's like, why is your writing so narrow? Why are you trying to put people into these boxes instead of making the boxes nice and open? I'm pretty sure that this is what TTRPGs are trying to do in general these days. They're trying to make the boxes as nice and open as possible in order to reach as many people as possible. In order to try and stop shoehorning people into these categories. Well, you are sitting there and you really, really want to tell the simplistic story of good guys versus the bad guys. When this is not the setting to do it in. There are no good guys. <laughs> there are legitimately no good guys in the story. But instead of realizing that, you're like, nope, anarchs are definitely the good ones and everybody else is bad. So... Justin, you and I, we have a problem here, okay? I have a problem with your writing style and with your need to pigeonhole players into these roles. Could you please stop? Well, I've gotten that off my chest. Thank you for listening to my rant, and here's to many more rants to come. Toodaloo.